make nests high in treetops to confuse their predators. Here's the message. Crow is the guardian and the messenger of your unique sacred story. The keeper of universal law, he stands at the gateway to assist you in the transition from one chapter in your life to another, from one level of being and doing in the world to the next. Think of being in that Nautilus shell and you're in that chamber and that stuck feeling that Cherokee's talking about, you're about to expand into the next chamber. So just surrender and allow yourself that expansion and watch. It'll happen very naturally. Uh, he stands at the gateway to assist you. Okay, I already read that. Da, da, da. As you approach, Crow calls out on your arrival, speaking the story of the steps that you have taken so far, the lessons and the gifts that you have gathered en route to this place. As you reach the threshold, Crow pauses and stares deep into your soul with cold metallic eyes. He asks you what you have learned and why you believe that you are now ready to move on to the new. What is the purpose of your path? So this is a good question for you guys to reflect upon. What have you learned and why do you feel you're ready to move forward into greater expansion? His call is sharp and penetrating and at times intimidating, but in truth, he does this only as a game. He is not really here to test you or hold you back, but to celebrate and herald your transition into a new realm of experience. He knows that you are ready, for he has watched your every step of the way and spoken your journey into the great gatherings of the tribe. He knows who you really are, do you? And that is a really important question. So Crow knows who you each are, do you know who you are? Who really are you? Are you ready to show that? Crow's penetrating stare and abrasive call is a gift, for it gives us the opportunity to strengthen your resolve and stare right back stepping forward with even more commitment than before. As you do, Crow breaks into a smile and begins to laugh. The celebration has begun. Another hero has crossed the threshold into the realm of the possible, all smiling, oh sorry, all smile knowing that the path ahead will rise to greet you. Welcome home. And here's the affirmation if any of you want to write it down. I am a unique being. Living my story epic and true. I walk my own way to my own beat, weaving ancient wisdom into the sacred new. So I'll read that one more time. I am a unique being, living my story epic and true. I walk my own way to my own beat, weaving ancient wisdom into the sacred new. So thank you, Crow Spirits. <laughs> So yeah, so if you if you guys all want to tune in and just, you know, resonate and like marinate with that question, like tune in and feel it, process it, and do a little meditation to explore what it is that you need to step into more and be authentic and how can you start really loving you more and the world's ready for that. That is what the world's ready for, not you to worry about everybody else, but to heal and love self. And that is going to make a profound shift on the planet. So I thank all of you for tuning in today. Uh, I really appreciate any of you that can share this video. If you go on YouTube and you want to follow us and like it and then share it, spread it around on Facebook, just like share the love because that's going to help these messages reach more people. And I really need your help with that. So thank you guys in any way that you feel led to share the messages. Um, and if you're ready for any one-on-one -on -one sessions, I still have that special going on for the month of June, buy seven sessions, or yeah, buy five sessions, get two free, so it's seven sessions. So contact me, and I wish you guys all the best, and have a beautiful, blessed week. Namaste. Yeah. <laughs>
always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it at www.nissancommunications.com. Sponsored by Atomus.com, makers of quality video recorders and converters for professionals. CarolinaApparel.com and DeltaForce.net. Greetings, everyone, and good afternoon. It is 5 o'clock. It's Tanya Love Show, and we took a little break last week, and I want to thank you all for being patient during that, and hopefully you guys, if you were watching the Super Bowl, you had a good time, and if you weren't, I hope you had a good time still. So we just decided to take that, that day off and give everyone a little space, and while I was on that little break, I uh, just have been really observing a lot of shifts going on um, on the planet and a lot of people really being challenged with shadow energies that they need to face, um, people being challenged, a lot of sensitive souls, empathic beings, um, really feeling these, it's kind of like I, I feel it like an invisible asteroid storm and this energy is just kind of pounding a lot of humans and really it's not to punish them. It's really coming in to help us see the shadow sides that we need to address. It's helping us to look into the ego side of ourselves so that we can clear it and we can rise out of there and we can come out of the shadow and really fully embody the light. And a lot of, um, I've been having a lot of prophetic dreams that are not really amazing and beautiful. And they've been, you know, kind of concerning, but at the same time, I've been feeling like just sharing the messages with everyone that if you're getting these feelings that something's off, like a disturbance in the force, it's really important that you go into anchoring your energy into the earth, like really anchoring the love and light in doing that, pulling in that new grid work into the planet. So if, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, just stay focused on love and light. And if you know exactly what I'm talking about, you need to really focus and get into that alignment with me because there's a lot of us light workers that are really here to do this work, to kind of grid in all this new consciousness and anchor it in. So <clears throat> today we got Valentine's Day coming up and we, you know, I feel every day is a great day for love. But what came to me for the topic today is to discuss what is love and like, what does love okay. really mean? What is love? Like, a lot of us have this concept of love, you know, being a girl and growing up in this culture and watching mm. romance movies. It's like, oh, love is, you know, when you go through all this pain and suffering and, and some Prince Charming comes in and sweeps you away and then you're saved and it's all good. Romantic version of that in a romantic movie. And for like the guys out there and maybe some girls that love the action movies that you know, it's about love is getting that power and getting all those women that you want and you get the money. And it's like the Godfather, you're in charge, you're in power, everyone honors you. They're kind of afraid of you. Um, there's all these different concepts of what love is. And many of us, I feel like if we were raised with a misaligned understanding of love, it would make sense that we struggle to really embody love in our now. So if we expect a shift on the planet of coming into alignment of love, of living authentically, of being in a vibration of love and light. And we don't really understand what love is. Do you see where we struggle? And that's where a lot of humans I feel are stuck right now is they want love. They want their twin flame, their soulmate relationship. They want to live out the mission of their soul's highest calling. They want to honor what they came to this planet to do. Um, and maybe some of you aren't even aware of that. Maybe you're just struggling and you're like, oh, I just feel pissed off. I feel stressed. 
I feel numb. I feel angry. I feel insecure. Just be honest about what you're feeling. But if you are in those places and you, you're really struggling and you're really trying to find love and you're looking in all the wrong places, I feel like the first step is to see that and to honor that and to really have the awareness that I have been chasing love externally. I have been trying to get all these women's attention on me or I've been trying to get all these guys to like me or want me or think I'm pretty. I've been wanting, you know, the teachers at school to give me the respect I deserve. I need that love. I want them to honor me. It could be chilled from a child's perspective. I really want my teachers to respect me for who I am as an individual. I really want my parents to listen to me, to like love me for who I really am, not who I feel like they want me to be. So, so many humans on the planet are going through this right now. And it's this, uh, the bigger perspective I'm getting and the biggest understanding I know that's happening globally is that we are, as a society, as humanity, we are rising in a higher awareness, a higher consciousness. So as we're coming into this place where we desire alignment, we desire higher consciousness, it's going to challenge everything that we grew and drew to us in the misaligned ways. So if we were in a relationship before where we tolerated abuse, we didn't really stand our ground and honor healthy boundaries. We didn't really learn how to say no. We just felt obligated. We felt guilt. We felt we were supposed to be stuff. We're supposed to be good little quiet girls. We're supposed to be polite. So a lot of us, if we've been trained in this way, which we have, society has very much been this almost like boot camp training for souls of domestication and of sub making you basically conform and helping you to submit to a certain program or a certain structure. So if as a child you were told, you know, just that man wants to hug you, go be polite. Just go be a polite little girl and hug that man. Like, be nice. What we're doing as parents is we're enabling a problem right then. We are teaching a soul, a child that's saying, ah, oh, cling to mom's leg. I don't want to go over there. And that child sensing something, sensing some kind of energy, they don't want it. They're not feeling into it. And then we say, go be a polite girl and go and ignore everything you feel. And I want you to go do this to make me happy so that, so that I'm proud of you, so that I feel satisfied and I feel like I'm in control of things. And then you don't embarrass me. And so as we do this to children, we start to desensitize them to their awareness they have awareness, very keen awareness of energy and of what feels good or not. And if we, we teach them to ignore that, we teach them to go counter to that, we actually in, encourage and enable them onto a path of abuse and of a path of enslavement and control. And why would, why would parents do that? So when you really look and explore that question, why would we as parents want to do that to our children? Well, I don't think consciously any of you are wanting to do that. And if you are consciously doing it, then you really, you know, be, own it and realize, wow, there's a dark part of you that really likes to enslave people. And for those that you, of you that are around a person, if they're like that, pay attention because it's really important for us to really observe what an energy's intention is and to honor what is healthy for us. But if we're doing that <clears throat> and it's like a subconscious thing that, you know, we're not really paying attention to it does affect these children. And those of you that are adults now raising children, if you never were shown honor or respect, chances are you don't mean to, but you're doing that to your children. You're projecting that same misalignment upon your children. So a big part of what I feel love is and what I, in my knowing, understand love to be is not at all what we are taught on this planet. It is not at all what we are taught in love songs or in movies or in families for that matter. And what we are taught is that if you love these family members, if you love this person, then you will go through just about anything for them. And that you will, there's songs, you know, like that I'd take a grenade for ya. There's songs that are like, what? The insanity of I would lay down and die for you. Is this really love or is that just really insanity? And it's really desperation and I will abuse myself so much to prove my love to you. And it's very Romeo and Juliet. And man, that stuff sells in books and it sells in, in love stories and movies. 
but it's a, you're getting gypped if you're going with it and if you're believing in it because it's actually the recipe for